Seesaw Trainers is your scaffold to success. Okay, so I'm going to read the story. And as I read the story, Joe, listen to what I'm saying. Identify your attribute and put it where it goes on the chart. All right, so everybody take a big deep breath. Exhale. Another big deep breath. Take your two right fingers and hit that shield of silence button on your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm the only one with the shield of silence off. Everybody else, you have your shields of silence on. There we go. Butterflies and moths. Suppose a beautiful insect lands on your arm late one afternoon while you're relaxing outside. It's obvious to you that this insect is either a butterfly or a moth, but which is it? what they have in common. Butterflies and moths have a lot in common. They're both part of the scientific order Lepidoptera, meaning scaled wing. Both insects start their lives as hungry caterpillars. They both eat nectar from flowers. Both butterflies and moths have six legs. What about the differences? Well, Butterflies fly during the day, and moths fly at night. So if you see something at nighttime, it's probably a moth. If you look at each of them when they're sitting on a flower, they also look different. But moths like to keep their wings spread apart. Butterflies keep their wings folded. Also, their bodies look different. First, moth bodies are plumpy and feathery, Butterfly bodies are skinnier and without feathers. Also, butterflies usually have more colorful wings. Moss wings are duller in color, usually brown or gray. There are many similarities and differences between butterflies and moths. I think they're both beautiful. Wow, how'd you do? Oh, give everybody a high five at your group. Nice. Teachers, do me a favor. Do me a favor, take your student hat off for a second. Out of your pocket, take that teacher hat, that teacher sombrero, put it on that head, look at that beauty right there. All right, with your teacher hat on. If I'm teaching kindergarten, we're not doing this with five different stations. I'm doing it as a whole class, and they're in pairs, and I'm telling them, I'm scaffolding them into this, right? And I have pictures, not words, at the beginning of my kindergarten. If my students needed it, and this was all new, maybe I would have them take it down and we would just do it again if that would have benefited them. So can you see the variety of different ways that I could go from here? Just watch how the lesson unfolds the way I've designed it. All right, teacher's hats off, student's hats back on. Back in the lesson. Wow, class, good job. Check this out. Um, I'm gonna put myself, where can I, how about a, guys do me a favor and move that right by Allison on that window. And let's have, oh, we can keep that right here. Can everybody see this right here? And maybe what I want you guys to do is just move over a little bit so this team can see you. All right. So class, we're going to talk about the similarities and the differences between butterflies and moths. So um, I can say this, for example, I can say one similarity between butterflies and moths is they both are Lepidoptera. Let's say that together. One, One similarity between butterflies and moths is they both are Lepidoptera. That's right. But that's not the only similarity. What's another similarity? Allison, give us another similarity. They both have the same legs. All right. Yeah. So class. Let's say this together. Go. One similarity between butterflies and moths is they both have six legs. And again, teachers, <laughs> if my students were unable to put the have in, what would I have written on this sticky? Yeah. Right on. Okay. Wow. Good job. So class, this is what I want you to do. With somebody next to you, high five somebody next to you. Make them a partner, partner, partner. And how about you and Joe, our partners, Casey? Partners, partners, let me see your partners. 
Raise your hand if nobody wants to be your partner. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> with your partner, read, and maybe you guys can get out of the way just a little bit because you're really, really tall. Come right over here. I'm really tall. <laughs> oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, next to me, you are, Casey. <laughs> All right. So, with your partner, with this, which says, eat nectar, say this sentence. Go. Diagram. I want to say Zen all the time now. <laughs> I'm looking at your Venn diagram with your partner. Each one, choose a characteristic and share this sentence with your partner. Similarity. Go. One each. about similarities we also talked about differences teachers I want you to notice this pattern Jolyn that I'm going to use every single time we do something in this lesson I just use the pattern the pattern was this the first person to put something up there was moi then I asked a student to put something up then I shared one and you and your partner did it and then I said you guys look at that and do it yourselves watch how many times I go through the same pattern. Okay, class, um, we're gonna do differences right now. So here's fly during the day, fly during the night. I could say one difference between butterflies and moths is butterflies fly during the day, but moths fly at night. Let's say this sentence together, come on. One difference between butterflies and moths is butterflies fly during the day, but moths fly at night. Right, but that's not the only difference. Kim, give us another difference. Point two, one on your sheet. What do you have? One difference uh -huh. between butterflies and moths is butterflies keep, wings, keep their wings folded. But moths? But moths, wings spread apart. Keep their wings spread apart. Let's say this together, go. One difference between butterflies and moths is butterflies keep their wings folded but moths keep their wings spread apart. Great. Now, with your partner, dull in color, colorful, say this shell with these attributes. Go. One difference between butterflies and moths is butterflies are colorful, but moths are still in color. Now, look at your Venn diagram. With your partner, each person, say one. Go. All right. Wow, class. First of all, give your partner a high five. Say good job. Nice. All right. So class, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about this a little more, but I'm gonna give you the Venn diagram and you are actually gonna fill it out and we're gonna do something else. So have a seat at your table and I'm gonna come around and pass it out. because we have a bazillion copies. It's better to pretend you're a student for this. All right, so with your, on your paper, look at the Venn diagram and fill it out.
ACIs on your own paper? <laughs> no. almost done. Jody's almost done. TJ's almost done. <laughs> so class, I got to tell you, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is you sound really great for a bunch of third graders. The bad news is, next year, with the exception of Lupe, you're all gonna be in fourth grade. <laughs> Imagine talking like that. <laughs> all right, so, uh, do you wanna know how fourth, grade, fourth graders say it? Seriously. They don't say similarity or difference. They see this right here, I'm gonna show you these words, and I want you to whisper to your face partner, which one of these words I'm gonna show you means similarity, and which one of these words that I'm gonna show you means difference? This says contrast, this says comparison. Tell your partner which one is which, which one means similarity, which one means difference. All right, which is point to the one that means similarity? Point to the one that means difference. Great, can you put them up there? And just like that, rather than me putting them up there, notice, I just give a student an opportunity to connect physically with these words again. Stick them up there, either here or here. So class, we're gonna say this again, um, because I could say something like this using comparison. I could say this and this, right? So I could say this, I could say one comparison between butterflies and moths is they both are lepidoptera, one Contrast between butterflies and moths is butterflies keep their wings folded, but moths keep their wings spread apart. Let's say this together. Come on. One comparison between butterflies and moths is they both are lepidoptera. One contrast between butterflies and moths is butterflies keep their wings folded, but moths keep their wings spread apart. Nice. So, with your partner, six legs, Fly during the day, fly at night, say this. Go. Wow, good job, guys. Watch what we're going to do now. We're just going to play this little checkout game. We've done this before. This is how we're going to do it. So uh, with my shoulder partner, so go like this with your shoulder partner, say hello, shoulder partner. So with my shoulder partner, we're just gonna take turns and I'm gonna share something. So I'm gonna say Juanita, one comparison between butterflies and moths is they both are Lepidoptera. And when I say that, I put a check next to Lepidoptera. Juanita doesn't, she didn't say it. Then Juanita's gonna say, well, what contrast between butterflies and moths is butterflies keep their wings folded, but moths keep their wings spread apart. Put your two index fingers where she's gonna put a check. She's gonna put a check on, wings folded, wings spread apart. And we're just gonna share back and forth until we have checks on everything. So Kirsten, I come up to Kirsten, and you wanna say one for me? Put your finger where Kirsten's going to put a check. And then your partner goes, and Joe, give us a contrast. You could say? One contrast between butterflies and moths is butterflies are uh, colorful and moths are. And Joe's going to put a check. One on this side, one on that side. All right, high five. Your shoulder partner. Person with the longest hair goes first, and if you have the same length of hair, I've got scissors. Because <laughs> you guys have the same length of hair.
butterflies and moths. Moths quiet, a chance to just check everything off. Now, with your students' hats off for a second, teachers' hats back on. Okay, because some students just do not know what to practice. They've never been shown how to practice. So, Maybe this teaches them, oh, there's a system to this. I have to make sure that I hold myself accountable. What's another reason why they check? So they don't get lost right on. What are the chances, do you think, high or low, that because I said put a check mark on it, more people say, more people practice than not? High or low? High. I want to say there's almost a 100% chance that inside your head, there's a little whisper that's going, you need to check on everyone. Look at your partner. She's got more checks than you. You better say it quick. What are the chances that that is a little voice that we're speaking to? I want to say it's pretty common. All right. How easy is it then to get them to practice if all it takes is putting the check? Back in the lesson. Whew. All right, class. Um, good job, by the way. High five your face partner and say, you're so smart. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was our filter party. So, class, we're going to do conversation circles right now. We've done this before. And, and in this, we've got an inner circle and an outer circle. And you see the inner circle right here. They're facing out. And the outer circle is facing in. So. That inner circle is going to say a comparison, and they're going to stay. They don't move. The outer circle is going to say a contrast, and then they move one to the right. Let me show you how this looks. Um, can you guys come up here, and we're going to make a little circle. Watch how this looks. So let's have you three can be the inner circle. Go right behind her, just like that, and you be right here. OK, this is the inner circle. And Lupe and I can be the outer circle right here. And I'm here, and there's somebody over here. So the inner circle is going to say comparison. One comparison between butterflies and mosses. They both have six legs. Uh huh. Outer circle, say a contrast. One contrast, contrast between butterflies and moss. Butterflies fly during the day, moths fly at night. And as soon as we're done, the inner circle stays, but the outer circle moves one to the right. Inner circle shares. Outer circle shares, one to the right. Inner circle, outer circle, one to the right. Oh, inner circle. <laughs> Have a seat. Okay. So, let's count off by any Audi. Any. I knew it. Any Audi. Any Audi. Any Audi. Any Audi. Any Audi. Somebody who's like a non-native. English speakers like, what the hell is any Audi? Any Audi? Any Audi? Any Audi? Any Audi? All right. All of the innies, stand up and make a circle around me over here. All innies only. Innies over here facing out. Right on, make a circle. Might have to be a little bigger. Here we go. Yep, make a circle. 
over here, a couple more people. Audis, find a partner, stand in front of them. <laughs> All right. Somebody out here, Chandra needs a partner. High five your partner, Amy needs a partner. Lupe needs a partner right over here, Linda. All right, inner circle, you're gonna go first in comparison, go. Outer circle contrast. Outer circle, move one to the right, go. High five your partner. Inner circle start, go. Comparison. One comparison between butterflies and moths is that they are lepidoptera. Out of circle move. High five your partner. Inner circle go. Butterflies are. I don't know that one. How does it move? You, you be inside. Go inside the circle and, and see what you can tell from being inside the circle. Okay. Okay. Well, one contrast between butterflies and moths. Butterflies. Butterflies are more colorful and moths are duller in color. Let us circle move! extroverted voice to be heard. And part of it is putting them in situations where that can happen, like the conversation circles. Nobody was listening whether or not you said it right or wrong, but just like you said, how much practice were they getting with this? All right, teachers. Um, so let's say, Evelyn, what, what's, what's something you and your partners talked about?
I didn't I didn't have to explain anything, did I? Yeah. I, I, I didn't give you the rule of not. We had this discussion. Share with them what your yeah, realization so, was. So I thought about that as well, as what if they were doing that. But you're hearing different ones by, by the okay. activity. So by the end, they're already you're, you're, they're popping to your mind. Because that's what I was doing. Because I'm like, okay. well, I'm just going to say the same thing to see how that works. But then yes. Heard and then I couldn't help it when eventually when I went to the inside circle, all those ideas that everybody had heard were popping into my mind, whether I you just can't help it. Even the student who wants to screw around and doesn't want to learn winds up learning just because of this cross-pollination that's happening. Yeah, Kristen. Um, it naturally um, differentiates because if there's a student who doesn't feel comfortable, they can just say the same thing over and over again. Uh -huh. But, you know, like me, who's like, oh, I got to get all of them, you know, I'm pushing myself to try to remember every single thing. Right on. And like you said, if there's someone who doesn't care, well, they're still going to get it anyways. Yeah, and, yeah like, and if that was your concern, couldn't you just say, say a do, don't repeat? And couldn't they use that if they're there and they're like, oh, I want a different one, couldn't they look over at the anchor chart? And, Why not? And or yeah, why one. I could have had them use their paper. By the way, hold up your papers. Some of your papers <laughs> look like this. Raise your hand if I gave you a paper that looked like a blank Venn diagram. Raise your hand if I gave you a paper in which all you did was you filled in a couple of words. Did you even know I was differentiating? Isn't that the way it should be? So, what, what's something else? Joe, what's something you got out of that? Uh, well, um, after we've had a chance to lift and be verbal and say everything we knew, uh -huh. then after all that was done, then you had to come and us write it in our journals, which goes along with what you've been saying. You've got to be able to verbalize it before you write it. That's right. What are the chances when you're walking around the room, you actually see this vocab on their page? What do you think, high or low? High, high. Yes! How many times at the end of this, at the end of that lesson, how many times did they say those words or hear them? This much, this much, or this much? That's right, we gotta give them a maximum of, of opportunities. It's gotta be a variety in there. Think of how many different ways you interacted with them. With your team, come up with those ways. Come up with six different ways I had you interact with the vocabulary, come on. We are TESOL trainers and we're your scaffold to success. Contact John Kongsvik today to learn more. Visit us online at www.tesoltrainers.com.